Hel Hello, everyone, and welcome to Madame Digital Edition 2020. I'm really happy to have you guys all here with us. Uh, it's not the usual Madame situation, but we're going to do our best and have hopefully a really great and informative um, panel and situation that I'm really excited about, and I hope you guys get to learn a lot as well. Um, First and foremost, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Jeff Benjamin. I'm a journalist based in New York City, currently in Chicago right now um, due to some <laughs> pandemic issues, but really happy to be joined by uh, an awesome panel um, that is going to talk about uh, the topic today, Breaking in the USA Behind the Scenes with K-Pop Star Ailey. Um, just real quickly about me, uh, I have been a journalist um, professionally with places like Billboard, New York Times, CNN, um, Forbes and beyond, writing about K-pop specifically as Billboard's K-pop columnist. And I've been watching um, the focus of our, of our uh, of our panel today, Ailey, since um, her first years in the industry back in 2011, 2012. Uh, met her a couple times even, and I'm so excited to now see what her next journey will be and the next steps of her journey will be with uh, this really great panel and great of group of collaborators that she has with her. So I'll let them really quickly introduce themselves and let's kick it off with Paul Farberman. Hey, Jeff. Good to see everybody. Uh, I'm uh, here live in uh, Los Angeles, and uh, I've, um, my background is I grew up in Toronto, uh, worked at Sony Music, and had the good fortune to be working at Sony when we signed a young uh, girl who didn't speak English named Celine Dion. It was my good fortune because eventually I left uh, Sony and, and went to work full-time with Celine and her husband, Renee, and the management team. Uh, among other things. And I um, was very, very fortunate uh, through David Kim, who we're going to see in a second here, um, to introduce me to Ailey. And uh, she was looking to expand her horizons uh, outside the K-pop world, outside of Korea, uh, to build on that, and in particular in the States, and looking for management. And uh, I, it's been about five years since I'd worked with Celine. And I was very reluctant to take on anybody, but when I heard and saw and met this wonderful, talented young lady, I realized this is the person I want to really put my heart and soul into and, and work with because I know that she's got everything it takes really to become a truly world-class international star. And uh, we're just on our way. We'll talk more about that later. Great. And uh, I'll also send it over to now, David Kim. Yes, thank you so much, Jeff. Um, I'm excited to be on this panel. Great to see everyone again, and nice to meet you, Jeff. Uh, so my name is David Kim. I'm a music immigration attorney. Um, I worked with a lot of um, local artists here, a lot on the publishing side. Um, I had my own practice called The Hollywood Lawyer and sold that. Uh, I used to work director of music business affairs at Sony Pictures. And now I am running for Congress, but I am excited to still be here on this music panel. Thank you. Great. And then last but not least, certainly, um, we have Ailey. Hi guys, um, so great to be here. Jeff, great seeing you again. Paul, David, it's always a pleasure. Thank you for the beautiful introduction, Paul. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here today with you guys. Um, I am Ailey. I am a K-pop artist out here in Seoul, Korea. Yeah, uh, who's, by the way, we have to mention, it's <clears throat> nearly Ailey's birthday um, oh. <laughs> right now. I, I know this is exactly how she envisioned um, hanging out before her birthday. So um, we're gonna make it yes, a bit yes, yes. a club quarantine right now. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I think just, I'm really curious too, you know, just to kick things off, you know, how did, we have quite a, a diverse group of people here right now. And I'm just curious, first and foremost, um, Paul and Ailey, how you guys got um, uh, connected uh, in the first place. And then Paul and David also, how did you guys get uh, initially connected? Well, the journey started with David and it started at Medem. Uh, okay. I'm a regular attendee at Medem and, uh, 
that's where a few years ago I met David and uh, we hit it off, became, you know, good friends. And since he uh, and I both live in Los Angeles, when we got back to LA, we got together and we stayed in touch. And um, he was the one who first made the suggestion to me, maybe you'd be interested in working with Ailey. Thank you, David. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thank you, David. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, before before Ailey goes ahead and jumps in um, and talks about how she's met uh, both of us. Yeah, I, I met Ailey several, I don't even know when, several, several years ago. Um, I had met her through her uncle and we had met through one of my mutual law school friends. And um, obviously, like you, Jeff, I've been a fan of her music since her debut too and I remember my brother saying oh my gosh look at this new artist her name like look at her video she's singing and she's on this program with Hisung and BMK and they're like these big veteran singers and she didn't even debut yet and she was on stage like belting out songs like she was a veteran singer and so when I saw that oh my gosh this person's so different like she's completely uh, like a treasure gem in this whole world and so that's how I met um, Ailey. We got connected uh, and I was like, dude, we need your music all over the world. It can't just be in Korea and Asia. Like you have a voice that no one else has. And so that's where um, like one of my main reasons, believe it or not, Jeff, Paul, Ailey is, was to go to Midem. Midem is like the music version of the Cannes Film Festival. It happens right after Cannes every year. And from what I was hearing, you, if you find the biggest managers, agents there, if you can't put them all in one place and get, get, in a, get an appointment. And so I went there with the intent of finding somebody for Ailey. And I was, um, after I think it was, yeah, no, seriously, after the white cleft jeans uh, stage outside, I was hanging out at the bar and Paul was there and we were talking and then he was really funny and we just continued talking and hanging out. And then he was like, oh yeah, I managed Celine. I was like, what, what'd you say? <laughs> 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 so that's how that happened. And then we stayed in touch. And then I was like, oh my gosh, there's this artist named Ailey. She's everything you need. Like after Celine, the next artist to work with that makes sense is Ailey. There's no other artist. Paul was like, all right, let me listen. And then he was sold and I didn't have to talk anymore. <laughs> Nice. And then you were you were the connecting point between uh between Paul and Ailey. Yes. Yes. Ah, I love it. Yeah, no, I, I highly suggest um to all our viewers watching. Um I, I remember that program that you were talking about, David. You know, Ailey, I remember your your cover of Beyonce's Halo in particular. And I was like, this girl is the real deal. Okay, you know. Um, it was it was a really cool moment, and then since then she's gone on to have number ones, um, big albums in Korea, and been able to tour and and kind of parlay this career into what we see today. Um, and I'm very excited to kind of talk about this next step um, with you guys too. So um, the focus of this panel is to, yeah, talk about Ailey breaking in the USA. Um, like we said, Ailey's been able to have a lot of Great success, awesome success in the K-pop world, mostly based um, in Korea. We've seen you here a couple times, Ailey, but now is kind of, I think, a really exciting moment to see you kind of transition and and basically, you know, not to be corny and reference one of your own songs, um, Home, but literally come back home and um, to... <laughs> You know, if you don't know, she's she's a Jersey girl, born. I you were think I you're born in Colorado, but yes, yes, girl, and um and yeah, just kind of like you know wanting to talk about this sort of overall strategy and and you know what are the first steps, um, Paul, when when you're kind of talking about an artist that has been able to become you know household name, number one singles in 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 an area in a K-pop world, a territory like Seoul in Korea. What are the first steps that need to happen when you're kind of thinking about that uh, coming to America specifically? Well, what we had talked about, uh, David, myself, and Ailey, and, and Andy, who is her representative, you know, in, in Korea, um, is it's incredible the success that she's had. But outside of the K-pop world, the rest of the world wouldn't be that much aware of her. Um, 
as they were not aware, you know, of the big Korean pop groups, BTS, Blackpink, et cetera, et cetera. While they were huge in the K-pop world, it took them some time to develop, you know, on a worldwide basis as they've done. And so I thought it was really important for her to come over to the States and um, meet some of the writer producers here. Uh, so, well, I actually, the first time I actually met her in person, face to face, was in Seoul, Korea, November, this past November, American Thanksgiving. And um, we really hit it off. I mean, we just really got on well. We're on the same wavelength. And, um, and we planned the trip uh, to come over here. Uh, it was during the Grammy week. And which was good and bad. It's great because there's so many people in town, but I actually work on the show. So it was a very busy week for me that I, would I really have the time to devote to Ailey? Uh, but I made the time and, and um, uh, she came to the Grammys and, and uh, I think had a great time, met a lot of people. And we spent that week meeting a lot of people that we can talk about in a, in a little bit. But the, the goal was, yeah, to get over her, uh, meet some great songwriters, producers that she would uh, collaborate with. Uh, we did that and then the next step will be for her to come back here and actually go into the studio with some of the people here uh, and get her career going. The, the one thing I didn't want to do, although it's tempting of course for any artist who's so successful in, in their market, is to go and approach the record labels now and say look I've got this big K-pop star, are you interested? Sure they might be interested but I'd rather go in there with her already having achieve some notoriety and success. Uh, the one of the many things that I love about Ailey is, um, while she's certainly been big in the K-pop world and we all know what the K-pop world is, she's got such a gift, a naturally great voice that I would never want her to leave her K-pop fans and, and her music and, and, and always keep and maintain that, that base and those fans but broaden it because she's, mm. you know, a world-class star, not just K-pop. So we want to expand on, on that whole base. Yeah, so it sounds like, you know, even before, before any type of, you know, larger moment needs to happen, there's sort of like a, a lot of behind the scenes work. Um, and, and I'm kind of curious what, what kind of, you know, what stage in the process do you, do you think um, we're at right now? Or, or what have you done? What is there still to be done? You said that there's still um, people you want to actually get into the studio with when Ailey uh, comes back to America. Is that kind of where your guys' head is at right now? Yeah, well, David, um, you know, before I even came on board, had already, and he can talk about it, uh, arranged uh, for her to sign <laughs> to the, the, the agency here in Los Angeles. So they're from working on some things. So David, you might want to just talk about how that step happened. Yeah, well, um, Andy, um, Ailey's representative connected me with um, an agent, a, a world top agency that was very interested in signing on Ailey. And I think um, here, uh, the, the companies and groups here, they're very interested in kind of the K-pop world, but they, they're not kind of sure as to how to approach it or to how to be that transition in the stage. And so um, even in my talks with the agency, it was more, okay, before we go on to the music part, let's actually just start with her as the artist on the digital side, because we need to actually promote the awareness of her first. And so I think a lot of people kind of assume, oh, you sign with the label, you put out the music and bam, you'll climb up. But no, it's a very, thoughtfully you have to kind of come at it with all angles from this angle with this angle creating and establishing the relationships first because for paul to go out and put his whole life on 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 for, for out for ailey for her agencies to do that too she needs to have a relationship with them first and then they also need to know what her strengths are and how to best uh, position and pitch her and so those are kind of the little steps i know a lot of people are like i want ailey's music now and i understand it because i want her music now too but for those <laughs> who are watching like we are we are working patiently towards that because there are certain processes you need to follow um with that especially having um since Ailey hasn't had an official U.S. career yet. Yeah, no, totally, totally. And we did get like kind of a taste of how things were gonna work out when you guys put out um, that great Christmas single, um, Sweater. 
earlier. I, I highly suggest you guys check that out if you if you haven't yet. But um, you know, David, you were kind of referring to this a bit at the beginning. But you know, who or or what kind of of partners are important to have on board from the get go when you're kind of thinking about this uh, this moment and, and when you're kind of preparing for for this kind of uh, this future. Yeah, and it's it's something that I tell a lot of my clients when I used to have my private practice was if you're an artist, actor, singer, songwriter, whoever you are, and your team is not completely like, they won't go out and die for you, then maybe it's not the right team. Um, because for me, it's like, whoever your manager is, whoever your agent is, whoever your attorney is, they need to be able to give up their life, like not... I mean, it's it's figuratively speaking, but I think it's really true in the sense of they need to love your music inside and out and be just willing to take one for your artist. And and so what I saw in Paul, and I, I don't know if he's aware of this, but when I was observing his reaction and response uh, when I played Ailey's music and was talking about her, I could see that his whole his whole face and being just changed. He was like, like this. And so I was like, yes okay, you just passed the first test. Because if that's not the reaction, then you're out. And so that was, <laughs> that was my thing. Because if your manager and agent aren't diehard working and loving and thinking that you're a thousand percent the real deal, then who else will? And I think that's the first thing that we wanted to have on board. And Paul, as soon as he came in, he wanted to make sure that everybody on the US side was, was that. And, and, and I know that Paul agrees with that too. And he was checking on the agency and, and doing his due diligence and saying, David, is this okay? And like, so, I, and, I, and, I, and when I saw all of that, I was like, I made the right choice. But. Good, okay. <laughs> I like that answer, that's good, that's good. That was great, that was great. <laughs> David, I'm, I, I'm curious, what, what's, what's your favorite Ailey song? Just as a, a quick, I, I hear the passion. I'm, I'm so curious. Ooh. I'm curious. Oh, that's very, that's very interesting. Yeah. Um, I really, I, I really like um, If You and Doll's House. Um, both of them. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I love all of her songs, but I really like If You and Doll's House. Okay. Okay. Great. Great, great, great. Awesome. Paul, I'll probably ask you that uh, in a little bit as well. But, um, you know, I, I think it's really interesting too, because K-pop is this is this word, right? It's becoming a well-known term in America. More labels are signing more um, artists. Is this right now, as, as we're kind of looking in 2020, is this crossover moment? Does this help with your pros prospects? Do you guys see this specific situation as independent of the movement? Um, what's your kind of take on kind of the, the state of k-pop right now um and, and how this kind of applies to you guys yeah i i certainly like i was saying that's what made her what she is that genre and i would never want her to abandon that k-pop world uh you can build on it um but never abandon it and, and in a different way i mean celine's career of course started just in the french language Right. And while she became a global superstar, to this day, she never, ever, ever neglected her French fr fans uh, in, in, in home in, in Canada, in Montreal, in Quebec, in Paris and France and ar around the world and continued to always still do many concerts to those fans, do separate French language albums and make sure that they stayed part of her life. And I you know, would want Alien, I know Alien would want to, you know, tell you the same thing. She wants to, you know, keep the fan base she's got, but just expand upon it. And, and, and I think you can do that if you do it smartly. I want to say one thing about the passion that David talked about, because while I saw her in, in Korea and saw her rehearsing in the studio and doing a bunch of things there, I'd never, unfortunately, time didn't work when I went there to see her actually at a live concert. So I never really saw her sing live in front of an audience. But when she was in LA, it was just coincidental. Um, David Foster, the, the successful producer, songwriter, um, had a concert uh, in town. And even though he had never met Ailey or spoken to her on the phone, 
he's known me a long, long time. We're good friends. He trusted me and we arranged that she would uh, sing, come up and sing a song at his concert here. And I, I think I actually may have told Ailey, but when she was singing, I got, I was like crying, like of joy. Like I was just like, <laughs> I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I mean, I, cause this is everything I wanted to and believe she was, but I, it's so different, you know, to see just as, you know, we're all talking here now and it's great for people and, and, to do this, but the, um, when you're live in a room, it's, it's just different chemistry. We've all seen a lot of artists putting their heart and souls into performing on, on, on uh, different shows around the world uh, during this, this uh, pandemic time, but you can't replace being live in front of them. And so seeing her sing live, I just literally had the goosebumps and everything that anybody wants to have when you want to work with someone. Yeah, uh, and, and you know, I think that leads to a really good point. And, and Ailey, I want to know, you know, I've, how do you think, you know, you've been, oh my gosh, like it's almost been like a decade, right? Since your debut in K-pop, you know, how, yes. do, those, how do those years, um, how have those years prepared you for maybe this next step in, in your career? Or what did you learn from your, your K-pop world? I've, uh, well, yeah, it's almost been a decade. I've been out here for about 10 years. Um, and I've been in this industry for about eight. Um, I was very young when I first wanted to start uh, singing on stage and, you know, making my mu own music, trying to become an own, my own artist. Um, but I feel like becoming a K-pop artist and, you know, um, experiencing all the press, even the press, um, and all kinds of um, situations, I feel like I'm more prepared for anything that can be thrown at me. Um, I'm definitely more experienced on stage. I have a lot more, I don't want to say stage presence because it's not me trying to be somebody else, but more like me uh, being more comfortable on stage, I guess. So I'm um, definitely a lot more experienced and I'm ready to share that with the world. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I still, I mean, we, we were talking about it before, but, you know, I, I, if you guys, you know, you can find it on YouTube um, if you want, but, you know, there was this amazing moment, I remember, when Ailey came back to um, New Jersey, actually, for KCON New York in 2016, and, you know, unfortunately, the audio cut out in the middle of one of Ailey's performances, but, you know, you handled it. I, I thought that was such a defining moment for you, um, just for me, even personally, as someone watching you from the get-go because um, you you kept going I think you finished the chorus acapella um, the whole crowd started singing along with you and it was just such a defining moment I think for you um, just in terms of like you know a lot of artists couldn't do that in a big arena this was the Prudential Center uh, in New York New Jersey and so that was really amazing to see and and, and you can definitely see how you've been prepared for this moment, um, for sure, I, I personally think. <laughs> um, and yeah. obviously, obviously, she is still very young, but for me, there's no question, it was one, another one of the, the pluses. Um, the years that she's had now in, in, in Korea, writing, performing, and doing everything, you know, she's been doing, um, she's developed to a point where if she had tried to enter this market five years ago or 10 years ago, maybe it wouldn't, but she's got the, yeah, she has the stage presence. It's, it's a natural stage presence, but she's got it. Um, and, and she's got the years of working on, on developing her voice to the point and, 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 and the, and confidence, uh, not cocky or arrogant, but confident, you know, and, and um, uh, I, I've seen her do interviews, both in Korean and English, and she's just, um, she's, yeah, more mature. She's still obviously very, very young, but but uh, a level of maturity that, that I really loved, and I just love spending the time with her uh, in Korea and then here in LA during the week of Grammys and how she handled herself. And, you know, we had meetings with some really 
super successful people in, in the music world, writers, producers, and, and uh, you know, she wasn't intimidated or shy. She was honored and, you know, but uh, yeah, it's her world and she's comfortable in that world. Nice. Any, a- any names you, you can tease or, or any particular people that you guys are really excited about or had really good, um, had really good experiences with? Uh, I, I can uh, certainly, I, Ellie, did you want to mention anybody? I mean, I certainly- I'm going to leave that to you because I don't know whose name to drop. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to drop names. <laughs> so I'm going to leave that up to you. Before she came over, I wanted to set up some meetings. So I called um, one of the senior senior presidents of Concert West AEG, John Meglin, say, is there anybody in the AEG world? And I called the Live Nation people as well. Uh, that it might be, you know, interesting for her to meet. And, and John goes, well, you should meet, you know, Susan Rosenbluth at, at Golden Voice. And I know Susan quite well. And uh, Golden Voice, because uh, she knows all the K-pop. And of course, Golden Voice does uh, Coachella and, and a lot of, you know, newer music things. So uh, I called her up and uh, I um, said, Susan, I want to talk to you about this artist I'm now working with here, you know, called Ailey. And she went, stop right there. And the way she said it, I was like afraid, like, oh my God, she knows her and had a bad incident with her. No, no. So I froze for that split second and she was, stop right there. I know Ailey. I saw her at KCON. She's incredible. I'm a big fan. In fact, I wanted to try and introduce her to some agents. So it's fantastic. So we arranged to meet. But uh, when we were at the Grammys backstage, uh, we bumped into Susan. So that was the first time Alien actually and I spoke to him, we did have a meeting with him. So um, uh, it, it was great. So, you know, when it's, when she's able to get back here and tour, we've certainly got a, a, a fan, a major fan and a major promoter uh, ready to, to help with some things. And um, I mentioned, you know, David Foster, obviously she sang it and met David. Um, we went over to Dan Warren, the, you know, the one of the most successful songwriters on the planet, I guess. We went over to her studio and Dan is in love with Ailey and, can't wait to ever come back and work with her. Um, uh, we had lunch with Walter Afanasiyev, who uh, I guess has worked with many of the biggest artists in the world. I guess the biggest thing he's done is he co-wrote and produced All I Want for Christmas, the uh, annual uh, Mariah Carey hit. Um, he produced My Heart Will Go On for Celine and many things. Um, but apart from sort of, if you want to say that uh, the older generation also, we, we spoke to people, um, like Jamie Zellick Hinlin, who has a company called Nonstop Management and uh, has uh, people like uh, Michael Pollock that we're, you know, gonna, gonna hook up with and Jay Cash and they've written, oh, I mean, Sugar and, and, and Don't Wanna Know by Maroon 5. Uh, Jay Cash wrote and produced those songs. Um, they've worked with uh, Selena Gomez, Ariana Grande, let's see, uh, Usher, Nicki Minaj, Kesha, Mega Trainer, all kinds of, you know, very current uh, younger artists. And, and so, um, it's kind of a mix that we wanted to work with some of the, you know, uh, nice. older producers uh, who really, you know, people like Walter and, and, and David really know how to work with a great, great, great vocalist because they worked with the Celines and the Mariahs and the Whitney Houstons and, 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 the, and the Lady Gagas, et cetera, et cetera. So a combination of those and, and some of the younger, newer guys who were, just having massive success. So, um, yeah, that's, um, Stefan Macchio is another guy who's a, Stefan Macchio, uh, uh, wrote, uh, and produced a lot of stuff for the weekend. Uh, he was one of the writers of Miley Cyrus's Wrecking Ball. So uh, it's great. Everybody I've introduced her to that's met her or heard her, they're dying to work with her. So that's the next step that will happen. And I mean, you know, it's so amazing and, you know, it's so exciting and, and I'm glad to hear there's like, you know, of course, so many positives in the works right now. Um, you know, I also just want to also quickly touch on too, you know, have there been hurdles? Um, are there any, um, yeah, are there any of those same hurdles or maybe unseen barriers that, you know, we can hear, we can talk all about as much about how positive K-pop is moving and how things are moving forward, but are there maybe unseen barriers or unseen hurdles that like might not be as obvious um, for you yeah, guys? I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and mention on that and then Paul can fill in and, um, but, but 
going back, I actually misspoke earlier. I love all of Ailey's songs on Doll's House, but the particular song was You and I. So my apologies if the fan no, no, gets no, mad I, about I that. But <laughs> okay, <laughs> I realized that. Fans but, on that. Yeah, but to fix that, um, in regards to what Paul had said, Ailey's at the top of her game right now. When you sit in the studio, you get chills. She's the best at executive producing, songwriting, singing, artist manner, etiquette. She has the biggest heart out of any artist I've met. So she's already set for success. Um, I think the hurdles that we do need, kind of need to come overcome are um, the US music market sort of plays a gatekeeper role in that. And they're very wary of foreign language artists kind of coming in and establishing and making some following. And so they already have their biases without even giving it a stab. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing is in regards to the distance that we have between Korea and here, um, a lot of in the past, we didn't have probably the means for artists from other countries to easily transition and break out here. That's why you've seen kind of failures with Wonder Girls, with BOA and other thing, everything else, because they had to leave their careers and leave their relevancy. And once you become irrelevant in that market, then you become irrelevant everywhere else. So it's like, okay, I want to grab this, but if I try reaching for this, I might lose this. And so that's sort of one of the hurdles, but I think now that we're in a digital age, we're on a, t on a panel like this, hopefully that does get better, but that's not keeping Paul or myself from, um, from making her break out into the US. So, and that's what we're doing right now. That's interesting, that's interesting. Yeah, and no, it's, it's interesting when he mentions Boa, I know what a huge star she is in the Korean world. And uh, I met with her uh, team uh, quite a number of years ago, in, uh, they were in LA and, they were also looking to bring, you know, someone like myself on board on their team to help break her. But um, uh, I guess she just didn't have the commitment to come here and do what needed to be done. Uh, and so she never, you know, really developed a career outside of Korea. But Ailey's got everything, I think, necessary to be able to do that. And... and, and like David said, uh, it's been trouble for, in America for artists from any foreign country, uh, uh, Asia, Korea, Asia, or anywhere in the, Europe, anywhere in the world. But um, that's changed uh, with this new, you know, era that we're living in, and with the success of other uh, K-pop artists. All of a sudden, yeah, there's so much more interest, and um, those with the real talent will come through. Definitely, the timing is now. For sure. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, no, lots of factors kind of definitely in the past that may have affected things, but it sounds like from what I'm hearing from you guys, the timing is, is really good right now. Uh, it's an exciting time. Um, we, we are, I mean, this went by really fast and I really wanna thank you guys for um, making this quite literally a, a uh, multi-country um, coming together. Uh, right now, but you know, as we close down, you know, what can we look forward to? What's um, is there anything we want to plug for the future or want people to know about just as we look ahead? Um, in this uh, crossover moment breaking in the USA behind the scenes with K pop star Ailey? Uh, well, definitely, hopefully. Some good music in the future will be coming out for the world to hear. Uh, we are collecting some great songs at the moment and I am recording in the studio uh, as well as recording the TV show out here in Korea uh, called Good Girl. Um, yes, it's actually a very interesting show. <laughs> if you guys want to check it out, uh, you guys could check it out. Um, and also, uh, I'm very happy to have such a supportive and big hearted team uh, working with me and I'm just excited for the future to unfold and just have everybody um, on board know that, you know, they all worked so hard uh, for this moment and have everyone be proud of everything that we achieve. And, and in addition to what we're pursuing in the music, and there will be new music coming out very soon, um, as I mentioned, when she was over in January, we had a chance to meet, you know, Janet Kim and Jordan Berg and Dan Kim, the people at CA who are so committed to her and passionate for her. And um, even though right now she's in Seoul, 
uh, over the last two months, uh, they've been, she's been doing audition tapes, some just vocals, some uh, on camera for different uh, film TV projects. So um, there's definitely uh, some great buzz and activity and she's doing, you know, great in that area too. So we're gonna build it all together. And as soon as uh, things open up a bit, she'll be back here in the States. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, yes, I, I hope, you know, that's all <laughs> hope and pray that, you know, everything uh, opens up soon. Um, and yeah, I, I really do thank you guys for coming together for this um, Madame Digital Edition that we're doing this year. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed our panel. And um, with that, I just hope everyone stays safe, that things open up soon. And really want to thank our panelists for taking the time for um, talking this morning slash night, depending on where you are. Thank you. I had a blast. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye. Enjoy your madam. Thank you. Bye. Well, until next year. Yes, see you all. <laughs>